So God said that they was going to try to murder me and cover up or try to make me kill myself or commit suicide and then cover up that there was a gun involved. So this is about a shooting, and it's not for the faint-hearted. I shot my child father in the leg. He is white, and he is a convicted felon. He was abusing me and my son. So let's get into this video. This is what all my channels is about, and... When you are talking about a shooting, this is very serious. And so I was in a jail in the Montgomery County Jail and Conference, Texas, where it happened. And he was saying, the Holy Spirit was showing me that they was trying to cover up that there was a shooting. So they were trying to cover up that there was a gun involved. And they were trying to just make sure that I was dead. However, they was going to lie about it and say it was because they took my son from me. And God said that they were trying to kill me because they took my son from me. So, basically, he um, was saying that they were trying to bring drugs into the equation. And he was saying something about somebody trying to give me real hard drugs when Austin was the one who was on real hard drugs and he was abusing me. And God said he was on crack. So around the time that they sued me, they God said, who sued her for her son? He was talking to the white women that was trying to have me killed and just cover it up. And God was like, okay, well, tell the truth about the gun. Okay, there was a shooting. What happened with that? Okay, he was abusing her. Okay, mm -hmm, we know about that. So who sued her for her son now? And God was very concerned about who you allowed to sue me for my son. They allowed Austin to sue me for my son. So I told y'all that Austin had threatened to rape him and molest him with Cynthia and Joseph and the coven and these black Freemasons. And so they sued me for my son. They had Austin do it at first. So Austin got out of prison abusing me and my son in my home. My God said it was my apartment and that I called the police several times. He was assaulting me. I told the police he was assaulting me and God made me go through his charges and he told me everything that I needed to say. And so God was like, so who did they allow to sue her for her son? <laughs> so they let him sue her for her son after he did all this to them. Okay, and God says she got the evidence. She got the 911 calls, and God says his mother, Cynthia Oviera, is trying to uh, destroy the evidence with the Conroe police about Austin abusing Andrea. And then they're trying to kill a baby in her and get him to get somebody else pregnant and then have her carrying the baby that she'd been carrying longer abused, trying to kill her baby. And so the Lord was like, they going to hell. But Cynthia was already saying, oh, she already knows she's going to hell because of the covenant that she joined and that she was in it and that they was racist and that they would do all of this stuff to my son. So God was like, who sued her for her son? So then Cynthia sued me for my son because Austin had gotten temporary custody of my son while I was in the jail on these charges now the charges are dropped and i'm out but while i was in the jail on these charges austin had got a temporary custody because they had him sue me some judge they said it was some judge idea to manipulate it this way and so he sued me for my son while I was still in jail on the charges for protecting myself. And God said he was abusing me and my son and that I was pregnant. And so they had um, people lying for him on the evidence. And they were saying that um, I needed to come back and make an appeal after Cynthia got custody of him. So Austin had temporary custody until I got out and I won against Austin and he had gotten arrested for assaulting someone else. Um, while I was incarcerated on the charges for protecting myself from him. And so Cynthia had to sue like the both of us for being incarcerated. So I was incarcerated for protecting myself and he was incarcerated for hurting somebody else again. 
And she came in, Austin's mother, and she's a white Caucasian female in a racist coven. And she comes in and sues the both of us and overlooks, okay, his mother is already in here for protecting herself from Austin. She ain't like, oh, let me try to help his mom get out because my son is still attacking people. She's like, oh, no, let me go and manipulate it and make it look like they're both unfit, knowing that. Andrea was doing just fine before my son got out attacking her. Yeah, she needed to get on her feet and everything, but she had a small baby, and I didn't want her to put Austin on child support. So at the end of the day, the ball was really in his court then as far as what he wanted to do when he got out of prison, if he going to still get out and keep abusing women or not and so Cynthia sued me in Austin for custody of Melbourne while I was still in jail for protecting myself and I had won the case because he had been attacking Cynthia Austin had been attacking Cynthia in her house as well so I had won against Cynthia I was just still in jail on the charges like as soon as I get out I'm coming to get my baby you know, and I knew there was organizations that I could go to that knew my case where me and my son could go because we both had been being abused and I knew that they knew the evidence. I knew I had family who housed that I could go to with my son and get a job and get on my feet. And I knew that I had friends who house that I could go to and get on my feet. I knew they had organizations to help women, even if it just took me six months and come back and get my son. They knew the evidence, but I got set up because nobody would help me when I got out of the Montgomery County Jail pregnant in the condition that I was in. They even was refusing to give me any medical care at all. So um, she had sued me and got temporary custody of my son while I was in the jail. So it still was temporary, and I had won against her. And Tracy Gilbert had told me, he's a white Caucasian judge in Conroe, Texas. He told me, he said, come back and bring me the evidence of what Austin, you know, whatever you incarcerated for. And then you come back. So I did that. But by this time, I had been set up because they had set the date for me and Cynthia to go against each other and read it to try to make it look like I was going against Austin and Cynthia knowing that Austin had just been arrested again for assaulting somebody else and that I was pregnant and that they tried to kill my baby in the jail and that I was pregnant while he was attacking me so it was real trifling what everybody was doing and they had my family involved to be like oh we gonna leave her outside like that and we gonna let everybody set her up and it was very sinister because these people was trying to murder me um, because he was white so despite the evidence that he was abusing us, abusing me and that I was protecting myself they was all willing to go along with this and so Jesus Christ was the only one that was with me and he was the only one going against Cynthia like you ain't have no right trying to keep Andrea from her son and so um, I had got out and three months later I got out August 2019 the shooting happened September 2018 Austin got out of prison July 2018 and I got out August 2019 and I was still pregnant um, and abused out of the jail and everybody knew me. So I had went from place to place and I had was um, moved around in Conroe, Texas and Chambers County, Umber, Texas. Uh, I moved around because I didn't have my own place and people were setting me up to not allow me to stay in their house and get stable. And they were trying to set me up in their houses knowing that I was pregnant and knowing what happened to me in the jail. And they were still trying to set me up to harm me because I shot Austin. And they were trying to set me up to make it look like I was unstable um, by not uh, allowing me to really stay in their home and get stable and get situated to where I have an environment for my son. And then they were trying to influence me with things that they could use against me to try to say that I was this or that I was that. And... They were um, openly denying me into the organizations that 
are supposed to help women uh, with certain resources. Like, when do you deny a woman into all of the shelters in your state? You know what I'm saying? Or your city. And then do it from state to state. That's when you have an agenda. Because you don't leave no woman out there like that and then have all these different people approaching her with an agenda. So that should pretty much sum up my entire case for anybody who has brains um, and you know anything about special victims units and things like that. I grew up watching Law and Order. And it's a very similar situation to where um, women and children could wind up harmed uh, and then have these huge organizations of people trying to cover up the information. So this woman had sued me for my baby and I had a job. So now they're trying to say that I don't have a job and that I'm a bum, but they set it up like this from the jail and so they knew that I was pregnant when they let me out of the jail and they trying to call it a tumor and God had already told me in the jail that they were trying to murder me that my baby daddy was involved that his mother was involved that Joseph was involved that my family was involved that the country was involved and that they was trying to kill my baby and me and say that it was a tumor because you could tell that a woman is with child, you can tell. And so um, the Lord was like, that ain't no tumor, that is a baby. And he was fighting for me. And they were saying that they was racist. They didn't care they was going to hell. And the black people was just not going to say anything. And so I had got out pregnant and I had got a job. But the people who they had me uh, trafficking me to, because they would not allow me to be into a shelter. I was on my own, but they were denying me rights to where I could be independent and not be set up the way they wanted to set me up. You know, because if a woman just go and get a shelter, go to the shelter and get her a child and get on her feet and come back and get her baby, then you lose. So they was over there trying to say, no, you can't come to the shelter. You got to stay outside. And then having men over there trying to make me a prostitute. And then having these men that know about the shooting and know I want my baby trying to make me a prostitute. And trying to make me do drugs. And, you know, like, come on, just stupid stuff. And it's like, I'm calling these shelters every day like, hello, my name is Andrea Jones. They know who I am. They know, okay, she's pregnant. We know what happened to her. We know she's shot Austin. We know he's white. We know what everybody trying to do to her. We know what the government No, you cannot come here, Andrea. We're setting you up outside. That's pretty much what it was. And so um, by the time that I went to the custody hearing, I showed up to all the court dates for my son, which was three months after I was released. And I had been set up from place to place to place to place. Everybody who house I went to was setting me up. Like, we don't want to see Andrea get her baby back. And we don't want to see Andrea get no help for her pregnancy. And we just going to keep all throwing out on the streets and trying to set her up. And that's pretty much what it was. So that messed up my jobs. I had gotten two jobs um, when I got out within that three month period and they was over there being hateful and trying to make it a bad environment for me and my son uh it wouldn't have been a good environment for him where because they were trying to set me up and cover up my pregnancy and cover up the evidence and just set me up and so um i ended up leaving and uh having to go to another place where they were setting me up and i could not keep a stable job because it was that many people trying to do it and they're still trying to do it so um, basically, I just had to move from place to place for my safety and try to keep them from killing my baby um, and me because I was still pregnant and, and the baby from the jail. And so this is what this was about. So the women who put me out of the shelter here in Atlanta, they're serving Egypt. And they know they serve in Egypt because my case was national and it may not have been like televised, but behind the scenes, it was national. Everybody knew about it, um, especially people in high places and people that got affiliations, even in low places, you know, uh, just some gang affiliation shit, like on, on the entire country. And they knew what was going on. So when I came down here to Atlanta, because they were setting me up in Texas. They were just trafficking me from the time that I left the jail. They were trafficking me. And 
everybody was trying to cover it up and I was staying outside because I was like, nah, they keep trying to set me up in their houses, so I ain't even finna and trying to stop me from putting out the information about my son because Cynthia is a child molester and she knows she shouldn't even have my baby, so everybody was trying to stop me from putting out the evidence about my son because the truth is, she threatened to rape and molest and kill him before she went and got Austin to sue me for him and Austin threatened to rape and kill him too and it don't matter how good you took care of him, you said you were going to do it and you need to give him back and everybody didn't know that they did that to my pregnancy and the jail is involved and they are not only involved with hoping that they covered up my pregnancy but that they also covered up what they said they were going to do to my son before they let Austin sue me for my son so that's why everybody was just like let her get set up and let the white people have their way uh, with her life and her body and her child and just ruin her whole her whole life and never let this woman get her baby again and just set this woman up like she's such a bum on the streets and like she's such a prostitute and never give her her child and that's pretty much what is going on and they going to continue to try to do it and so so I never had anywhere to get stable since I left the jail. And as my mind is maturing um, to the wisdom of God, that he was already warning me what they was going to do before I even got out of the jail. And he was letting me know he would be with me. And even though my mind was not mature enough really to go through what I went through, God, I guess you say he can't, he's not going to give me more than I can handle. Like, I made it through it, you know. So I guess I was ready but he was with me. Um, but it was a lot that I had to go through as far as the setups. And as I look back on it now, trying to organize myself and be like, I'm going to do this. I'm going and I'm going to get my son. I'm going out there about my baby. And that's just what it is. Whatever it takes, whatever I got to do. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's just what it is. And I I got to the mental capacity, like, to where I was like, hmm, I really did not really have a choice, you know what I'm saying, because of the way that they set it up. They set it up to keep me unstable. And see, I like to go into that term litigation abuse because... You could say it's okay to be grimy with somebody when you have a case, but at the same time as a mother, as a mother and as someone who do have the spirit of God and it has had the presence of God with me to explain to me how to go about it as a woman and how the Lord look at it. The Lord was like, he was abusing you and your son and you are a woman and he is guilty for that. And your pregnancy matters, and your son, and this woman being a child molester, and her not having no business trying to keep you from your baby, and people lying about your pregnancy, and people trying to attack you for protecting yourself from a man that was abusing you and your son. People wanting to see you lose your place. People lying about your apartment. I'm on your side. Then they had me looking at it like that. So that's why I go hard like I do because the Lord was the one who showed me how to look at it. And he let me know that the police had repercussions because I lost my place. And now they out here trying to say, oh, she unstable. She ain't got what it need to take care of her baby after this lady threatened to rape and kill her baby. And then sued her for her son. So it's a setup. So they kept setting me up. And only God was on my side and he was talking to me. He was with me. And he was showing me the setups. And so they set me up all the way from Houston from the jail. Uh, we're trying to ha not let me have anywhere to get stable. You know, nowhere. So And then tried to run me out the state. And I did my best to stay out there. Uh, without getting into any trouble. 
So, people were trying to get me in trouble um, in Houston, and they were trying to tear down my image for these people, and the Lord had let me know that it was deeper than that around the time that they announced the COVID pandemic, that they were shutting down everything. The Lord had showed me that the Lord had showed me that there was a woman who they had me with, um, who had a male around who had brought me there. And he showed me they was trying to set me up actually, um, to where like trying to harm me about where they gave my son to this woman. And that there was a lot of people involved that were trying to harm me because you don't have no right to be trying to give nobody son to anybody and that they were setting me up so everybody who could try to say oh she a bum she unstable they were setting me up they were setting me up in those locations and I was trying my damnness to get somewhere by myself to where I don't got people trying to harm me and no baby in my body and be covering up evidence about a pregnancy that I never got help for and then covering up why these people have my son and what they said they would do to him and their real agenda for us, you know, and then to have family thinking they gonna come out the woodworks and try to uh befriend these people or belittle you in some kind of way when it comes to this type of case um it's because of the coven and it reminds me of the coven with god and jehovah about uh abraham isaac and jacob and how these people have literally made a coven with the devil and with it being completely adverse to brown skin and skin like bronze like from revelations and to see so many black people willing to sell me out just because I have a baby with a white man and you're gonna sit there and lie but it's because of the coven that they already had with them when you have God tell you that they worship in them and denouncing him, then I'm like, okay, they're going to keep lying for these white people. They're going to keep lying for them. If you denouncing God for them and whatever y'all are getting on this earth out of them, because that's what they doing. And the only thing I can stand on is you don't really know the power. So she sued me for my baby. And... Then they started coming after me, trying to kill me. So three months after I got out of jail, they had this final little suit where everybody set me up to not have nowhere stable where I could be with my son. And then they said that she didn't have to give him back to me. And she had threatened to molest them and do all kind of stuff to my little boy. And she kept them. Her and Austin both threatened to do it. And her husband and said they was in a racist clan and all the black people that was trafficking me and everybody knew about it my family everybody knew about it and it was so wicked that I had been out three months and I could get my baby and I got everybody setting me up like I can't have nobody support me because I shot Austin and Lee in self-defense and because I was pregnant that I couldn't have nowhere to stay to be able to get my little boy to come back home to his mama and then God was saying the white women was trying to make me out to be like I was some crazy lunatic woman and God was like showing my son crawling up on me and showing my baby not even tripping and then God was showing like uh, them white women was not there to protect her baby when he almost got hurt so he was like ain't no CPS no woman nobody coming to Andrea saying anything about uh, her protecting her little boy and then God was like um she was incarcerated and that she was not convicted of any crime and said that I was even writing a book and so you know um I had gotten out in August 2019 and so three months later uh December 
2019, Tracy Gilbert gave my son to Cynthia Overe after everybody had set me up to make it look like I was unstable and they still doing it. And they done did it for so long that that's how they trying to paint the picture of somebody when they trying to do death rituals and steal people, children, and it's millionaires and people involved and people that molest kids. They're going to keep trying to do the operation. So, December 2019 was when he gave my son away, and my son was three. And God specifically said that it was a case where Tracy gave my three-year-old son away. He said, that's why that they had them trying to murder me in Houston in the house and trying to stage arrest and trying to do all kind of stuff to me. And... He said in Atlanta that they was covering up my pregnancy and that they need to tell the truth about it, that my family didn't know about it, need to tell the truth about it. Um, and God, uh, he was saying that he was showing me Joseph Overa being scared, like running around, like not acting right because of the information coming out. And that's Cynthia Overa's husband, that's Austin's father. And so... They're racist, and I shot Austin in the leg, and so everybody been trying to set me up so they can keep my little boy, and so they had set me up from August 2019, all the, when I got out of jail, all the way up to December 2019, trying to have me looking unstable by nobody allowing me to come stay there. And God said I had a lawsuit because they made me lose my apartment, and I had been standing in my apartment for three years. But they were trying to say Joseph helped me out with my bills, and God said it don't matter. And I already told y'all, Cynthia didn't even want me to try to put Austin on child support. So, they had me set up up until December 2019. Then we came into the new year of January 2020. So, the whole time from January 2020 all the way up until December 2020, they were setting me up. Because I had already lost my apartment and I didn't, I was not allowed to go to the shelters. They was telling me they was full and they kept telling me that and they were setting me up outside because none of my family or friends let me come in their house and none of the shelters let me come inside. I had been released from that jail pregnant and everybody knew what was going on. They had even threatened to molest my baby and left me outside like that in Texas and with a baby in my body and they I had to go with certain males that were saying that they would let me come inside or whatever that they wanted to be my boyfriend or whatever you know and these guys were setting me up and so they knew that I was pregnant and they was bringing me in there trying to starve me and fight me for these people and they were trying to stop me from putting out the evidence about my son and that's what they did the entire year from January 2020 to December 2020 and I made my YouTube channel because I got tired of them doing it and I had left these people for all my free will and I had this is how they wanted to set me up in the first place but I was like I don't care I'll just go outside because I don't want to be getting set up in their houses and the Holy Spirit kept moving me to run up out them houses where they was trying to bring me in and so uh, I ended up starting my channel and I was at the bus stop trying to sleep and I was pregnant and so um, I started asking for donations and started to go for me account, PayPal, and people started donating money because they were starving me and I was pregnant because they was trying, they had starved me in the jail. And so I, it didn't look like I was pregnant when I got out after a year and it was still alive. And so I kept, I started eating and it started growing and it was moving and you could tell and everybody knew, oh, that baby's still alive. And then so they kept trying to um, bring me 
in locations and killing and chasing me around and you know I was a free woman but that I was being denied the medical right at the hospitals for the pregnancy because of what they had done to the baby in the jail and they were denying me into the shelters and trying to have these men setting me up and some women in locations and they had given my son away to Cynthia already and had set me up like that from the jail um, and God said they made me lose my apartment in Atlanta. He said that I had a lawsuit, uh, the Lord said, because they made me lose my apartment because I had a place where I was living for three years. And Austin got out of prison attacking me and ran me from my home. And they incarcerated me pregnant and did this to my body and then let me out and took my son and let me out with no apartment and all that happened to me. And God said that I had a lawsuit and that people were trying to murder me because they gave my son away and Austin was abusing me in my apartment and that I have the right to press charges and so they were trying to murder me about it. So I was not really in contact with my family uh, because initially they was trying to go along with them killing my baby and me and taking my son. So I had cut contact with them like just how I would do any enemy or predator, you know, when somebody is doing your baby like that. And so these people threatened to molest my son. So when you got family that's sitting over there like, oh, we're not going to say anything. We're going to let them make it look like you ain't got nowhere to go and that you just a bum on the street and they turn into militia oh, baby and kill and we're not gonna say nothing it's like nah I'm not gonna keep talking to you so I don't talk to them and so um I was just basically out there in Houston trying to make it on my own and I started receiving some donations after I started telling my story that I was pregnant and that they took my son and what was going on that Austin was abusing me. I was telling on YouTube and people started sending me money on my GoFundMe account and my PayPal so they could help me because they were starving the baby in me and leaving me outside and it was horrible and so I had started being able to get food and I was trying to get me a room or get me an apartment or something and these people started trying to act like they'll bring me in their house and say they'll rent a place to me and was trying to set me up to be killed up out of the place. And they knew that I was pregnant and they knew what they had done to me in the jail and they was trying to set me up to be murdered uh, as a satanic ritual death to some white witches. And it was about the shooting. It was about Austin. But like I said, all the charges against me was dropped. And I was trying to get my son, but they were still setting me up. And so I started my channel. I think I said October 2020, I started like my main channel. But um, I know it was sometime, I think, in December 2020 that they tried to do a ritual on me. And God told me that I could just leave that I didn't have to sit there and let that man set me up like that just because I was pregnant and I needed somewhere to go. He was like, you can get your bags. You can go. Your God, Jehovah, can deliver you. And he was showing me while I was there that my little sister, Shakina, was setting me up because she knew that Cynthia didn't have no business having my son and that Austin was abusing me, that I was pregnant in the jail, that they was trying to murder me pregnant in the jail, that they was trying to cover up the fact that Austin was abusing me, that they made me lose my apartment and that they took all of my stuff out of my home. She knew that they was trying to murder me because I was black and that they was white and she was trying to go along with it and be wicked and God was showing me just get up out of this man house and leave and I did and so um I was in Houston outside and I didn't have my donations anymore and um, I ended up having somebody start donating me some more money um, on my PayPal account and I had some people buying me a room that seen me outside so I was able to get food and have a room for a few days here and there and it was a struggle because I had to go from place to place a few times and um, I still was being denied the medical care and I was still pregnant and they were still trying to terrorize me and follow me and abuse me, things like that. And the charges was dropped 
So I was in a hotel and my auntie had called me because I was having all these visitations from Beyonce Knowles and from her sister Solange Knowles and from Kenya Moore uh, knowing that I was pregnant and that they was doing this to me and I was like in the bed in the hotel because I had been having these visitations from these women. So it was not dreams or anything like that. You know, when somebody visiting you, visiting you and the Holy Spirit is in the midst as well. And God was there. So I knew what was going on. And I, I was in the bed and I was just going through it. And I remember... Um, my auntie Barbara had called me because I was telling about my visions on YouTube and I was telling about my baby daddy abusing me and what it was all about, what America was trying to do to me and about my pregnancy and why they were lying about it and why I was telling people that I was pregnant on social media and what happened to me. And so by this point, my auntie um, had contacted me and told me that she knew that Austin was abusing me and that I could come to Little Rock, Arkansas with her. And so I went to Arkansas with her and when I went she was trying to stop me from getting my little boy back. She was trying to set me up in her home like I was not pregnant like they did. My auntie was trying to say that I was covering it up or they were just trying to cause distractions. The main point I'm trying to make is that I went down there and I was down there for like a week and God was just telling me that I needed to leave her house and that you know it had something to do with my little boy because of what these people threatened to do to my little boy and that people was just being evil you know what I'm saying people knew that I had not seen my son and it was just wickedness and so i ended up leaving her house and um the point i'm trying to make with her is she just was telling me that i could come down there and it let me know that my family knew that i had a channel because at first i didn't tell them that i had a channel and they just was going to let these people, this lady threatened to molest my baby boy. So why the hell am I letting any of my family allowing these people to try to set me up like like I'm a bum on the streets? You know, so they ought to let you know what the agenda is, what they plan on doing to me. Because shouldn't none of my family be letting these white people set me up like I'm no bum on those streets and they threatened to rape him and molest him and then they could try to say oh they got pictures of him and Austin is getting married and I already explained to y'all the setup that God already let me know they were going to try to do that so okay you're going to try to make the white man look like he got all this going for himself and try to set your family member up and then oh they ain't got nothing to do with me I got my own problems nah that's not what God showed me because everybody had their hand in it. Everybody had their hand in it. And everybody still got their hand in it because I want my son. And so they um, continued to just try to set me up um, all over. And then uh, my family member tried to do me dirty in Arkansas. And so I was like, okay, I don't want to go back to Houston because they won't let me in the shelters. I was like, so let me go to Atlanta, Georgia. And let me get on the Greyhound and get a ticket down there because they had a bunch of shelters. And I didn't want to go to no family house or do none of that because they was already setting me up. They already knew what the people agenda was to try to kill my baby in the jail. That's what God was showing me was that the fact that I was pregnant in the jail and that my family knew that she was pregnant and they trying to murder her baby in the jail. That let you know she cutting your ass off. He let me know I was cutting their ass off. Because if you knew they was trying to kill my baby in the jail inside of my body and that I was innocent, then you, if you knew the information, then ain't no need for you cover nobody to cover it up. If you want to say, oh, they had a right to do it because I shot Austin, okay, then just say how you feel. Just say your opinion, but don't lie about it. And since they lying about it, 
and they want to act like they did not know that I was pregnant in the jail, then you cut off. And if that mean, oh, okay, well, she going to be homeless on the street because we don't want to tell the truth that she was pregnant in the jail. Okay, then I'm just going to be homeless on the street because y'all don't want to tell the truth that I was pregnant in the jail. So that's why I don't talk to my family because when a woman got a baby in her body and people are chasing her around trying to kill her with a baby in her body and you want to say you love her and that you care for her, you lying. But God showed it was much worse. God showed that they was right there with people trying to uh, help tell lies and stories about me that was not true in the midst of all of it. So you really wanted to see my demise. You really wanted to see bad things happen to me. And this woman done threatened to molest my baby. And you still trying to do wickedness to me and you my family member. Okay, so you really want to see me dead. You really want to see Austin and his family win after they done threatened to rape him. So yeah, that's why I'm fool with my family. And I'm glad God showed me that they was trying to murder me. So anyway, uh, when I got to Atlanta, they had men trying to bring me into abandoned houses and apartments, and I was just trying to get into the shelter. And as soon as I got off the bus, they already had people trying to set me up, and they knew who I was. They knew I had a YouTube channel. I told y'all my auntie had contacted me and knew I had a channel, so everybody knew that I had a channel, and I was putting out the information about what they did to my baby and me and my body in that jail, and putting out the information that Cynthia was a child molest and threatening to molest my baby, and that they were setting me up outside. Everybody knew that. I was putting out that information. By the time I got here to Atlanta, it was people in Atlanta trying to set me up in the jail to be killed because I shot the white man. I told y'all T.I. and all them was involved. So at the end of the day, I already knew that I was going to get set up when I came to Atlanta. And I said it when I was on my way down here, but I was coming to get into the shelter because they would not let me in no shelters in Texas. And they had Arkansas PD trying to set me up, Texas PD trying to set me up, and then they got uh, APD trying to set me up out here. So it is what it is. I shot a gun, so the people want to hurt me, and they want to tell the truth about my pregnancy. And so, and then he's white on top of that, and they trying to make it seem like he's a kid. And God is like, he ain't no kid. He's a grown man that's abusing women, and he got charges, and he been on felony probation. So you can't try to paint Austin out to be no white kid or something like that. And he's been in prison for assault, and he's abusing people. And God said, I ain't never been in prison. So... For people to be lying, God said that my sisters was wrong. He said my little sister was wrong because Austin was abusing me and my son, and you know that I had my own place. And then he said my older sister was wrong because she knew the truth that I was pregnant and that I've been telling the truth that I was pregnant and that they did that to me and my baby. So, hell, yeah, that's wrong. You ain't finna see me hanging out with nobody that even say they my friend that's going to do something like that. So, what am I going to be hanging out with you and you my family or you my sister and you going to do something like that to me? Why would I withhold information? See, people treat their friends better than they treat their own family. Because I bet you they probably wouldn't have did that to one of their friends. They have been telling all the real information about what happened to one of their friends. Oh, she pregnant. And he was doing this to her. And he, he was abusing her baby. But if it's your sister, or you got a chip on your shoulder about your sister, that you're going to let people try to do your sister crazy. And then sit back and hope you're going to watch it all unfold. And so, and then still think that you're supposed to be cool with me. Wow. People do that to me because I shot a gun. Nah, so um, they started setting me up when I got out here to Atlanta. And I, they knew I said I was coming to get to the shelter out here. So they had the shelters denying me and saying they wouldn't take me in, trying to leave me outside and get set up off rip. And I kept going and exposing it on my channel that I was pregnant and that they was lying and that they would not allow me into the shelters, but they was allowing me into the shelters that was on drugs. And God said that I was sober so and pregnant. 
So I let the woman know that I was trifling not to let me in as a pregnant black woman just because they was abusing me in Texas. And that I came to Atlanta to get into the shelter and put out the evidence. So they led me into the shelter and then tried to stop me from putting out the evidence that I was pregnant and the evidence that they gave my son away to Cynthia. And God said it's because she's a child molester and she's a witch. So they had staged to put me out of the shelter once I had got the fetal heart monitor and proved that I was pregnant. And then I was starting to put out more of the evidence about me and my son and our life and showing how they were setting me up. And then they put me out of the shelter. They tried to fight me knowing I was pregnant and tried to have me arrested by the police department. And I told y'all they had Texas PD, APD, and Arkansas Police Department, Atlanta Police Department. They had all these different police officers trying to hurt me a pregnant black woman over racism and so um that's all it was about the bottom line and I, I had to swear on his name I gotta swear on Jehovah name that's the bottom line because of the evidence to the case and that it's just purely about his skin color when you look at the evidence when you really go into the evidence and then they'll make up all these different excuses so they want to pull the operation from the time of the mother's release for a two year period they pull the operation to try to how they gonna shift it on me try to hurt me, abuse me make me look a certain way have somebody influence me a certain way and then be like oh the mother is this the mother is that because you're being racist and you don't want to tell the truth that he's white He's abusing her. She's black and she's got a baby. She was pregnant because you're racist. And that's the bottom line. And so everybody that's serving the same agenda, they going to work every day. They get money up under these four. They not finna jeopardize anything pertaining to their well-being to speak up for Andrea Jones, her babies, you know, in her case. They not going to do it. And um, so God was showing me someone was wicked and that someone was scared. And so um, they had a stage to have me put out of the shelter for this information getting out and them wanted to paint me out as like some street walker for Cynthia's coven. And she done stole my baby from me. And then I told y'all they done threatened to rape and molest him. So they like, oh, sent the mama up outside, abuse her. And they were saying they wanted to rape, rape. So these men were saying they wanted to have sex with me while I was in the jail. They were saying they were going to try to force me to have sex with me, like black men that knew about the shooting, and that they were going to have sex with me, and they were threatening to molest my son and try to keep us apart. And Cynthia and Joseph and Austin was involved with all of this, and they was my family. Everybody was involved with trying to find a way to retaliate against me. And so when they had me at the shelter, so these black women was involved with this ritual where they was threatening to molest my son and rape me. And so these black women in the shelters is involved with these covens and they serving in Egypt. And they know that all oh, these people want to set me up a certain way on the streets. So when I came to Atlanta to get in the shelter, they already knew who I was. They knew I had a channel. Um, they knew everybody in the country knew who I was and that I was pregnant. And they knew that I had shot Austin. And they knew that Cynthia took my son that she was a child molester and they were setting me up they knew the baby was still alive in my body and so I put out the evidence and they staged to have me put out the shelter after a week because they wanted to set me up to make me have to be have sex with people just like they did in Texas they were trying to make me have to have sex with people and trying to hurt my pregnancy and trying to have me going in environments where people would be trying to treat me like I wasn't pregnant and trying to make the baby die and that's why they want me in the shelter in like a healthy environment. So they set me up from with the baby still in my body uh, from the shelter in February and made me go with a man. And he was trying to do something to me and the baby in the house. And God was showing me that it involved Cynthia and that she was a witch in the coven. And he was showing me it involved my pregnancy uh, while they were setting me up in the apartment with the man uh, when they put me out of the shelter uh, he was showing in Atlanta
Atlanta here. He was showing me that uh, Austin, my baby daddy, my white baby daddy was involved um, because he was on hard drugs and God said Austin was on crack when we was doing the custody hearing while I was in the jail. God had said Austin was not going to show up to one of the custody hearings because Austin was on crack again. And I didn't know. I know Austin said he was doing heroin and methamphetamine, but God also said he was doing crack. And his mother, Cynthia Overa, was showing up while I was incarcerated trying to cover for Austin and still keep my son from me while I was in the jail trying to stop me from having the charges dropped and trying to stop the truth from coming out that I was pregnant in the jail from protecting myself from her son and he had gotten hurt and she took my little boy and threatened him and then was trying to hope they would kill my baby and me and then that I would never get out and get my son from her and I'm out and I want my son from her and they've been setting me up. So, um, God was showing me that when I was in an apartment with the man Marcus Mitchell, the black guy, um, they had me go with from the shelter out here in Atlanta. And I was pregnant and I was putting out the baby heartbeat in there and God was showing me that Austin was on drugs and that he knew that the baby heartbeat had been released on my channel. And that he just wanted to get drugs and he wanted it all to go away. And that it was too much for him to handle. For real, that the whole country was trying to cover up that I was pregnant by. Him. And then God was showing that it was too much for me to handle as well. Um, because we both knew that I was pregnant and we knew what they had did to me, but he was just trying to get drugs in exchange for the baby's heartbeat. So basically they was trying to um, make the baby heartbeat readings disappear um, while I was in the house with the male Marcus Mitchell. So they was trying to um, make the heartbeat readings disappear and have Austin on drugs to where he would not come forward with the information and have him scared as well. And then he was showing my older sister Larissa in Atlanta knowing that I was pregnant and covering it up.